other couple of things and observations of the 30 year run. You know, I put family first. It was important to me to have my amazing kids, you know, and I have two grown children now, and I never put my career before that ever. It was always a mom first. I've had that first in my Twitter bio forever. Yeah. Uh, mom first. It, it's not just a cliche for me. It's fact. I've, every day. That's all that matters to me is my children and their happiness. Yes. Um, my dog uh, in the last you know, five years came into my life. And so <laughs> she's a rescue. She's wonderful. But you know, my kids are definitely number one. So I was able to have balance. Yeah. You know, when there was a lot of pressure on women of all ages to like put their career first. And I really, the message to young women now, women who've been in the business like yourself, uh, women that are older than you, uh, you know, who've been in the business 10, 15 years, even 20 years, 25 years. I just always push that to, mm -hmm. you know, try to get that balance. I mean, a good friend of mine who I used to work with at ESPN way back when, mm -hmm. Danielle, my good friend, I, I can't remember, 20 years ago, she said this to me, we we're on the street corner, you know, walking around. I forgot where we were and probably at some basketball game or something. We were covering <laughs> some sporting thing, something right? like that, some sporting <laughs> event. Yeah. And we were just talking about the job and what, who's not getting what and who gets this and blah, blah, blah. And this was like before social media where right. you knew everyone's, you know, life story and everything they're doing at every moment of the day. Mm -hmm. And she says, you know, Linda, I've let all that go. She goes, because you know why? They don't read your resume at your funeral. Yeah. And I'm like, but you know, <laughs> it's crazy, right? Just like I, you forget as you get old, trust me, you'll forget a lot when you get older <laughs> like me. I remember that. Yeah. That is what I remember. And I remember where we were. I don't remember the city, but I remember we were waiting for the light to change. We were walking around the city, a new city. You know, that again, we were covering some sporting event and Danielle said that to me, they won't read your resume at your funeral. And that's when it's like, you know, okay, mm -hmm. that's it. And when I find myself going there or comparing or wishing I had this and why does this person have this opportunity and blah, blah, blah. And why does this person make more money and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Just be in that moment and enjoy what you got mm -hmm. and find ways to keep that spark going, that fire going. And that's right. what I have done over yeah. the past 30 years. And I love that too, because, you know, you mentioned there's such a mom guilt, right? I've got three little ones and yeah. I have this dream at the same time. Like I told my husband before he, we even started really dating. I was like, by the way, I have this dream and I'll do whatever I need to do to go get it. So you can be along for the ride or you can support. And he's been nothing but supportive and, and so great with the kids. But for so long, I had always put that first. And then I think you and I spoke last summer and you had mentioned yeah. that and it's totally just shape shifted how I've done everything, you know, and it's great because the kids can come to some of these events, you know, I go covered to beauty league. Well, they can go run around and watch hockey and mom can still work and they can kind of do that. So I'm trying to like integrate both, but it's a challenge. It's not yeah. something easy. Cause it is, it's, it's a, it's a different world. I mean, right now they're still young enough, but once they get older and get into sports themselves, I think there'll be much more decisions that I have to make in regard to, yes, I'm going to cover this game versus watching them play this game. Right. Exactly. How did you handle some of those decisions? Yeah, exactly. And like you at the time, I mean, for me, I had a great significant other. I was married then, uh, you know, uh, my ex-husband, fabulous dad, still yeah. is. Um, and he was there, you know, he made a decision to take a step back in his career, but he knew my career going into it when we got married was going to be the career that had a chance to, you know, actually pay the bills. Yeah, right. And that's what it turned out to be. So, I mean, you know, it was an easy decision that we made as a family yep. because, you know, the I don't have to tell you, I mean, daycare costs. We didn't have a nanny. Um, all of that didn't want my kids mm. raised by a nanny. Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, there were challenges and you do have to pick and choose, but I'm going to tell you, Jess, you and so many other young moms out there in this business, you're doing the right thing yeah. because trust me, I look back and see how my kids have grown yeah. and, and I'm knocking on wood, how amazing they are. Yeah. And I'm not just saying this because I'm biased or whatever, because they're my kids. <laughs> I remember having this chat with both my kids, Sammy and Dan. And I said, you know, I have this like, and I was like teary eyed. I, I said, this might be the first time I'm sharing this, you know, out loud. Yeah. But I felt like early in my career, you know, when I was trying to make a name for myself on ESPN, on SportsCenter, um, there were so many times I went to other events to be to grow my brand or let people know, oh, Linda, you know, because, you know, you were competing with other sports center anchors who were always at this event, this sporting thing, this, this. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, add that into me working full time at night doing sports center. Yeah. So like my colleagues were on there. Many of my colleagues on their off days were going to attend things and I right. had to pick and choose. And sometimes I did choose to go attend things. And mm-hmm. sometimes seven nights a week, I wasn't home. Mm-hmm. And I felt a lot of guilt. Yeah. And I remember talking to my kids, you know, most recently in the last couple of years about that, that I had this guilt. And it's not like I told them just so they can say, oh, no, mom, don't worry about it. But they literally were like, are you kidding? Yeah. We were, we were not like, wait, we love you. We knew you were doing what you had to do. We were not waiting by the window for mm-hmm. your car to pull up and come up the driveway. Right. And the reason why I bring up that analogy, Jess, is because when I was a little girl and my mom worked full time and my dad worked full time, I was the little girl sitting in my parents' bedroom near the window, mm-hmm. waiting for them to come home at night. Yeah. And I just assumed, you know, my kids were like that. And I right. didn't know that or I blocked it out. And they're like, we were never like that because mm-hmm. you raised two independent children. There you go. So, what yeah. to your point, Jess? of like what you're doing and trying to share and bringing your kids here and there. I think it's great. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I, you know, that, that lifted such, you know, this guilt that I put on myself. Right. And you just have to do the best you can each day. 